the first American we know in history who took an active part and about who we know a lot was Alexander Russell Webb. He was the first white American to embrace Islam and he represented Muslims at the Parliament of World Religions in Chicago in 1893. He was a journalist, he was a member of the Theosophical Society and he was the U.S. Consul General in Manila, Philippines in the 1890s. But he became a Muslim in the 1890s, over 100 years ago, and he had contact with some of the rich Muslims in India, British India, and came to New York, Manhattan, and established an office there and a publishing house. And he published the first major Muslim publication called The Muslim World in the United States. Muhammad Alexandra Russell Webb. You will come across this fellow uh, in the literature. I mean, and Webb tried his very best to plant Islam in America. He published the first major uh, 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 publication, the mother of all magazines and journals produced in America, was started by him. And he wrote a book called Islam in America. And that book, which was published in 1893, was the first book ever published by a Muslim in this country, talking about Islam in America at that time. Now, uh, Webb, of course, went to India, British India, and gave lectures. There are people now who are pulling his lectures together to publish them for the benefit of scholars and people who are interested. Now, Webb planted the seed of Islam in American uh, society in New York. One of the things that's really interesting about Webb <clears throat> is that, first of all, he, was a, he became a journalist. He was well educated. He was from a good family. He came from a good background, but he also was political. But one of the things that really impresses me about Webb is the fact that he knew in America that Americans are not monolithic. He knew that they don't all hate Islam. He knew that some of them are enemies, and some of them are friends, and some of them are neutral. And so therefore, in all of his work, he always looked for allies. In the United States, there were people that were bitterly opposed to Webb. Those are the missionaries and what we today call the Christian right. But in the United States, there were lots of other Christians who stood behind him, and he supported them, and they supported him. Another thing, too, Webb believed that it wasn't his job to convert Americans. So he wasn't out to convert people. He had a faith in the American people. And his belief, as he says many times, is that by and large, the American people are fair-minded people. All they need is to hear the truth. All they need is to see the message. And the message will speak for itself. And for that reason, his essential purpose in everything that he did was to try to get the message across to the American people of what Islam teaches and who the Prophet was, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one of the things that I can say about Webb um, without qualification, is that this is a person who knew the Prophet and loved the Prophet. And when you hear Webb speak about the Prophet Muhammad, it almost brings tears to your eyes. It's as if he knew him. Um, he, and he loved the biography of the Prophet. Um, his speeches, when he would speak about the Prophet, <clears throat> are extremely impressive. And as I told you, he has a poem in one of his issues <coughs> which is about the death of the prophet, which is a poem written by Victor Hugo. Now, who knew that Victor Hugo had written a poem about the death of the prophet? And this poem is absolutely beautiful. Absolutely. It has a few historical mistakes in it about Zaid and uh, other details of the prophetic biography, but it is an absolutely beautiful poem. And again, it's part of the culture of Webb, the editor, the newspaper man. He knew Mark Twain, by the way. He knew Eugene Field, one of the greatest journalists in American history. Worked with Eugene Field. 
uh, is that he knew how to, what to bring to the American people. So it's really a great legacy.